Hello students, this is Sunet Smith and this is the first lecture on Chapter 11, Statement of Cash Flows. The learning outcomes are as listed in the beginning of the textbook chapter. We're going to talk about what does the concept cash mean, describe the purpose of the Statement of Cash Flows, categorize transactions into three groups of cash activities. So you'll see the Statement of Cash Flows has operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities, and we'll talk about each one. You also need to be able to convert the information in the statement of profit or loss and other comprehensive income and the statement of financial position into cash transactions. So those are the two financial statements you've already studied, the statement of profit and loss and the statement of financial position. So we are now going to be teaching you a third statement, which shows cash transactions only. So you need to be able to compile a basic statement of cash flows in accordance with the requirements of international financial reporting standards. That's often abbreviated as IFRS. You don't have to study IFRS in detail in first year, you'll do more of it in second year, but everything we teach you is in accordance with the requirements of IFRS. So in this lecture, I'm going to be doing the introduction and the cash flow from operating activities, which is the first section of the three sections of the cash flow statement. I'm going to be working from chapter 11, page 281 to 289 and 292 to 297. Question 11.1 is going to be done on a separate video together with question 11.4. So those you will see on video two. Okay, let, let's think about what cash is. Very obvious. It's the money you have in the bank account, any money you have in a savings account. It can't be in a long-term account, which is not available to you within the next 12-month period. Remember, current assets are things that you can use in the next 12 months. Petty cash and cash floats. So petty cash is normally something that a secretary keeps to buy toilet paper and milk and that kind of thing for a business. It usually has a few hundred rand in it. The cash float in a, in a business like pick and pay, for example, where they've got tills, each till will have a cash float in it of a couple of thousand rand, and that will also be part of the cash of the business. We don't deal with that, however, in the cash flow statement that we do. Notice deposits also would be cash, cash items if you are able to access the money in the notice deposit in the next 12 months. So a statement of cash flow shows us all the cash receipts and cash payments of an entity for a period. And the purpose is to show us the inflow and outflow of cash. And that gives information to the users that they can't get from the statement of profit or loss and the statement of financial position. It actually shows the cash that's been generated from operating activities. Remember, we do the statement of profit and loss on a accrual basis. We have debtors and creditors, so not all the amounts on the statement of profit and loss have actually been received and paid. Whereas in the cash flow, we're going to be showing how much cash has actually been generated from operations, how much money has been sent, spent on purchasing and disposing non-current assets, any changes in investments, and financing of the business, how much the owners put in, whether it's share capital, or just um, capital from the owner of a sole trader, any borrowings, loans, and repayments of those loans. Those are the things that will be shown on the statement of cash flows that a reader can't get from the other information in the financial statements. So there are three main activities that we're going to be looking at. Cash flows from operating activities, investing activities, and financing activities. I'm going to be doing this first, and we'll be doing these as a separate lecture later on. Cash flows from investing and financing activities. All of the, the cash flow statement balances at the end to the changes in the cash and cash equivalents. So you take the cash at the beginning of the year and you look at what the cash is at the end of the year. And the difference between the two is the cash that's either been 
coming in from operating activities, spent on investing activities, received from financing activities. So a cash flow statement reconciles the cash you had on hand at the beginning of the year to the cash you had on hand at the end of the year. This is what a statement of cash flows look like, looks like. So you must always please make sure you get the headings right. We always give principal marks for headings. So you first put the name of the business, then a statement of cash flows for the year ended. Like with the SPL, you say for the year ended. Not like the statement of financial position, which is as at. Because remember the financial statement of financial position is a snapshot. This is showing you cash flow statements for a period the year in December 2003. So we're going to be doing the cash flows from operating activities first. And as I said later on, we're going to be doing cash flows from investing and financing activities. And please note what I said to you. Here's your cash and cash equivalents at the beginning of the year and your cash and cash equivalents at the end of the year. So we are either going to have an increase or decrease in cash, which is taking your cash flow at the beginning cash amount at the beginning of the year and then reconciling it to the cash amount at the end of the year. So when we finish doing the three sections, we'll show you how it balances to the changes in cash balances at the beginning of the end of the year. So under cash flows from operating activities, we're first going to show cash receipts from customers, cash paid to suppliers and employees, cash generated from operations. Then there are certain items that we show separately interest received and paid and drawings. This cash flow statement is for a sole trader. You also have to know how to do cash flow statements for a company. So we are doing this first part, part A. You will see here, part B will give you a cash flow from investing activities, part C cash flow from financing activities. So the three added together will be the increase or decrease in cash for the year. So let's first think about examples of cash flows from operating activities. The actual cash receipts from sales of goods and services. The payments we make to suppliers for goods and services. The payments we make to employees for salaries and wages. These three items make up the cash generated from operations. So your day-to-day -day operations, you're receiving money from customers, paying suppliers, paying your employees, and that will give you the cash generated from the operations. Then under operating activities, we should also show cash payments or refunds of income taxes separately. That's only for companies. We show interest payments, interest received. Sorry, I already said taxation paid. And also dividends paid, but that will also only be for companies. They get shown separately. And again, it's only the actual amounts that have been paid and drawings of cash by the owner. So interest that we've actually received, interest we've, ac sorry, yeah, interest we've actually paid, dividends we've paid, and drawings that the owner has taken out in the form of money all get reflected as cash flows under the operating activities section of the cash flow statement. So we're going to be working with example 11.1, Karoo Merino Farming in your book. In the question, they start off by showing us the statement of financial position as at 31st of December 2013. You will see in the question that they show us information for the current year 2013 and the comparative year. It's very critical in cash flow questions that you take note of which is the current year and which is the prior year. This will make a big difference to your answers. So the current year is in the first column, the prior year is in the second column. The things we're going to focus on first in the operating activities section are current assets and current liabilities. Current assets are inventory trade debtors and bank and current liabilities are trade and other creditors. We will deal with non-current assets, equity and non-current liability when we do investing and financing activities and cash flow statements. So we're going to be looking at the opening and closing balance for inventory, opening and closing balance for trade debtors. The bank opening and closing balance, we will look at it right at the end because we balance the cash flow statements to these amounts. 
So we're going to be looking at these balances, opening and closing, and trade and other creditors opening and closing balances. So the 22700 is the opening balance for inventory for the year. This is the closing balance, 33800. Debtors 26590 is opening balance, 22600 is closing balance. Same with creditors, here's your opening balance and here's your closing balance, 22500. So you need to remember that because I'm going to be using those numbers to explain to you how to put together the operating section of the cash flow statement. Then also in the statement of changes in equity, we are going to make an assumption here because we don't get given any other information that the drawings were all cash drawings. Okay, so you can assume that unless they tell you otherwise. So for example, otherwise might be if the owner took inventory, then he hasn't taken cash, he's taken inventory. So we're always going to assume that it's cash unless we get told otherwise. Then on the notes, often when we do the investing activity section, we'll look at the notes for PPE. What you need to take note of in this note is the depreciation amount, because depreciation goes onto the statement of profit and loss, but it's not a cash flow item. So when something is not a cash flow item, we have to exclude it when we calculate cash flows. So it's for that reason that I'm highlighting depreciation to you. They haven't given us a statement of profit and loss. We're going to put that together later on. What they have told us is that the totals for the year ended for sales. We had cash sales of a million, credit sales of 656,000, giving us 1,656,000 total for sales. Cost of sales is 828,000. Inventory purchased is 839,100. Remember, cost of sales is opening inventory plus purchases minus closing inventory. And we don't, the depreciation amount we know because we saw that in the previous slide on um, the note for property, plant and equipment, interest income and interest expense. In this question, because we don't get told otherwise, we're going to assume that that is equal to the amount of cash we received. You might remember when we did loans, there were times when we had interest income receivable, interest expense payable, because we had to accrue for items relating to interest. But in this question, there's nothing indicating that there are accruals for interest. So we can assume the interest amounts are for cash. Once I've finished all the slides, we will have done the whole cash flow statement of Curie Merino Farming, but now we're only going to do the receipts and payments relating to operating activities. So we're first going to look at cash received from customers. The total sales per the statement of profit and loss are not cash receipts. We need to look at how debt has changed. There could be an increase or decrease in the debtor's account. And remember, if you're selling on credit, it means you haven't received all your money by the end of the year. The other way we can work out cash received from customers is by reconstructing the debtor's account. So I'm going to show you how to reconstruct the debtor's account, but I'm also going to show you the, the shortcut method where you can take your total sales and then look at your change in debtors to work out the cash receipts from customers. So in example 11.1, I've taken this from the question. They've given us the cash and credit sales amounts and they've given us trade debtors. I got this from the statement of financial position at the end of last year and the end of this year. So that's your opening and your closing balance for debtors. So what we're going to do now is determine cash receipt from customers in the 2013 financial year. So we can reconstruct the debtors account. In the debtors account, I've put here the closing balance at the end of last year becomes the opening balance beginning of this year. Remember, debtors are an asset. They will have balances on the debit side. When assets increase, we debit them. And the closing balance gets carried down 22,600 to the beginning of the next year. The balance is 22,600. In the sales amount, we have added cash and credit sales. So this is a, a debtor's account, which we are doing purely for calculating cash flows. It's actually not 
a completely correct debtors account because it has cash sales in it as well, which we don't normally put into a debtors account. But if we're doing a cash flow statement and we've got to work out what is the amount of money we receive from sales, we can actually just put the sales amount in, including cash sales, and the balancing amount in your account will then be the actual money that you receive from customers. So if you take your opening balance in debtors and add sales and subtract your closing balance of debtors, you will then get the amount of money that was received from customers. Your entry would have been debit bank credit debtors. So the cash receipts from customers for the year is 1,659,990. Another way of working out the cash received from customers is if we look at the information, the debtors balance decreased from 26,590 to 22,600. That's a decrease of 3,990 rand. Okay, so wh what it means is they owe us 3,990 less. So it's equivalent to saying, that they paid us 3,990 effectively to reduce their balances that they owe from the one year to the next. So if I now take the total amount of sales, which is income, and I add to that the change in the debtors, which is an increase, it means they've paid us money, it's an increase in cash, it was a decrease in the debtors balance, but a decrease in the debtors balance effectively means the debtors owe us less. If they owed us less, it means they've paid us money. So if I add the 3,990 to the 1,656,000, I get 1,659,990, which is the amount you also saw in the debtors account that I did just now. So that's how you calculate cash received from customers, which is the very first line on your statement of cash flows. Then we're going to calculate cash paid to suppliers. We're going to take the cost of sales from the statement of profit and loss. We're going to add or subtract the change in inventory, the opening to the closing balance, and add or subtract the change in creditors, the opening to the closing balance. So we're going to do a shortcut method here, which I'm going to show you second. I'm first going to reconstruct accounts for you to work out cash paid to suppliers. So again, from example 11.1, They've given us certain information. They've told us the cost of sales. They've told us the purchases. They've, we can also, from the statement of financial position, get the opening and closing inventory and the opening and closing amounts for creditors. Remember, 2012 will be the opening amounts, 2013 is the closing amounts. So I start off by putting in the balances that I've been given. Creditors, remember, have a credit balance. This is your opening balance, and then your closing balance gets carried down, 22,500. Inventory is an asset, so creditors were liability, so they have a credit balance. Inventories are an asset, so they have a debit balance. That's your opening balance on inventory, and this is your closing balance of inventory. So we put those in first to reconstruct the creditors and inventory accounts we want to work out how much was actually paid to creditors during the year. We want to work out cash paid to suppliers. This question, we're using um, the perpetual system for calculating inventories. So as we sell inventories, we're taking out the cost of sales. And as we buy inventories, we are going to be debiting inventories and crediting creditors. So we want to, like a puzzle, now work out what are these amounts. So the first thing we can put in is we know the cost of sales amount. That cost of sales amount was given to us. So the entry for that is credit inventory because you don't have it anymore. You've sold it and you debit the expense cost of sales with 828000 You then add up cost of sales and the closing balance. You get 861800 that means we paid the creditors 839,100. We actually were given this amount in the question, but sometimes you won't be given it. That was the amount that we're showing for purchases. So during the year when we bought inventories, we debited inventories and credited 
creditors with 839.100. So now we balance the creditors account. The credit side is a total of 866.500. And then the balancing amount here is the amount that we actually pay to our creditors during the year. So we've got given opening and closing balances for inventories and creditors. We got told the cost of sales and we got told how much was spent buying inventory purchases from creditors. So it means in the creditors account, we could work out the balancing amount, which is the amount that we pay to creditors. So creditors are liability. We started off with a credit balance. It increases for the inventory we purchased and it decreases for the payments that were made to the creditors. So the shortcut method for doing this, taking the same information and determining the cash paid to suppliers. What I can say is that the inventory balance increased from 22,700 to 33,800. You should see that that means I've spent more money. By the end of the year, there was effectively 11,100 more inventory. So I must have spent extra 11,100 increasing my inventory balance. The creditors balance decreased from 27,400 to 22,500. So what that means is that 4,900 less means that we must have actually paid the creditors an additional 4,900 so that the balance owing to the creditors could reduce. So if I now take the cost of sales amount that was given and I add to that, because remember that's money that I've spent, okay? So that's an outflow of cash. And I add to that the 11,100, which is an outflow of inventory, extra inventory I've bought. And I add to that the 4,900, because that's payments I've made to creditors. So if I take those amounts and add them together, I get the 844,000, which is the amount that we saw in the creditors account that I reconstructed just now. The other thing is we don't only buy, um, we don't only make payments to suppliers of inventories, we make payments for other expenses like bank charges, telephone, lights and water. So we have to calculate what those expenses are and how much was cash and put that together with the cash payments that we made to creditors on the statement of cash flows. So cash paid to suppliers will include not only supplies we bought inventories from, and we also have to show cash that we've paid to our employees for salaries and wages. So you need to calculate what your other operating expenses will be, take out any non-cash items, which is like depreciation. Also, you're going to take out items that we're going to show separately on the statement of cash flows, like interest paid and receipt. So now let's just look at example 11.1. .1. Here they've reconstructed the statement of profit and loss so that you can see how to work out the net cash expenses. The sales and cost of sales were given to you in the question. So you can work out the gross profit is 828,000. Other income interest received was also given to you in the question. Expenses then, we didn't have the total expenses. This amount we didn't know, but we did know how much finance costs were, and we know that depreciation is an expense, but it's not a cash expense. So if we now take the gross profit amount plus this interest income amount, that gives you your total income. And the profit for the year they also gave us. So the difference between the gross profit and the interest and the profit for the year are then your expenses. So you can take the 828,000 plus the 6870 minus this 88,120 and you will get these expenses. And then you can subtract the finance cost and the depreciation to get this amount of 727,616, which is then the expenses that will be cash expenses. That's other than cash payments to suppliers, which we worked out using the cost of sales number. Remember, this isn't the cash number. The cash number was 844,000. And we got that by reconstructing the creditors and inventory account. Here we've got our other cash payments 
for the year by reconstructing our other expenses. And then um, we're taking away depreciation, giving us expenses of 727.616. So on the statement of cash flows, the first part of the statement of cash flows can now be completed. You must memorize the wording, please. Easy marks, you need to learn the wording like you learned the wording and the format for the statement of profit and loss and the statement of financial position. Please learn the wording and format for the statement of cash flows. So you always start with cash flows from operating activities. Your first line is cash receipts from clients, which we worked out. That was the amount that we'd actually received from clients. We debited bank credited debtors. This is cash paid to suppliers and employees. And this 844,000 was cash paid to creditors, where we credited bank debited creditors. And this 727,616 was your other expenses that were cash expenses. So that excluded depreciation. So those two together give me the cash paid to suppliers and employees. So the difference is cash generated by operations. Remember, interest received and paid has been excluded from this number. I show my interest received and interest paid separately. And to finish off the cash flows from operating activities, I show the money that the owner took from the business, the drawings, and that gives me this amount, which is the cash flows from operating activities. So this business, remember, had a profit of 88,000 odd, but the actual cash flows from operating activities were only 23,590. That's the amount they received from their operations for the year. What we did now was a cash flow statement for a sole trader, but remember in companies, we also have dividends paid. And if the amount paid for dividends is not given, you're going to have to reconstruct a shareholders for dividends account. So I'm going to give you an example. Let's say a particular business had shareholders that we owed 45,002 for dividends at the end of last year, 60,000 at the end of this year. And during this year, we declared a dividend of 80. So we said shareholders were entitled to a dividend of 80,000 for this year. We are going to calculate the total dividends that were actually paid during the year. What we can do is just take the opening balance of 45,000, add the dividends that were declared for the year, and subtract the closing balance of 60,000. And that will give us the actual amount that was paid during the year for dividends is 65,000. So that's the amount that was actually paid to the shareholders, but it's the payment, it's not the expense. The dividend expense, which is going to go on your statement of changes in equity to your company, is 80. This is the dividend payment, where we would have actually credited bank, debited shareholders for dividends. So if we reconstruct the shareholders for dividends account, here was your opening balance, here was your closing balance. Remember, it's a liability, we owe them money. The dividends declared, we debit dividends. It goes to retained earnings. It reduces retained earnings. We show it on the statement of changes in equity and we credit shareholders for dividends because we now owe them 80,000. So we add together the 80 that we owe them for this year plus the 45 that we owe them from the beginning of the year, giving us 125,000. So now if we subtract what we still owe them at the end of the year, it means we must have paid them the difference which is 65,000. So that entry would have been debit shareholders for dividends, credit bank. So remember we said you can take the opening balance plus what the dividend amount was, subtract the closing balance, and you'll get the amount paid for dividends. That will also go on your um, statement of cash flows, where you saw just now where we showed the drawings for the owner, we would in a company instead show the dividends paid to shareholders. There would not be drawings in a company. So with dividends paid, <clears throat> this is what I actually showed you just now. We can calculate the total dividends paid by taking the opening balance plus the dividends minus the closing balance and giving us the amount paid during the year. 
I've already showed you that. The other thing that happens in a company that doesn't happen in a sole trade is the tax expense. Remember, the tax expense is not necessarily the tax payment. Remember, companies pay provisional tax. You only know how much tax is actually owing once you've finished the financial year. So you need to reconstruct the South African Revenue Services or the current tax payable account, the liability account, to find the actual amount that's owed, that, that was paid for tax. So I'm going to give you an example. So we had an opening balance of 6,500 owing for tax and a closing balance of 8,000. And during the current year, the actual income tax expense is 15. So we're going to calculate the income tax for the year and we're going to show you an alternative calculation. So the first thing we're going to do is just look at the alternative calculation. So if I take the opening balance and I add the tax expense, that's how much we owe SARS, and I subtract the closing balance, it means I'm going to end up with 13,500. Sorry, I've written over that now. 13,500, which will be the actual amount I've paid to SARS during the year. So this is what it will look like in the ledger account. We'll have the opening balance. This is a liability and the closing balance. And we know what the tax expense was. We debited tax expense and credited SARS, the current tax payable account. So it means if I add up the opening balance plus the tax expense, I get 21,500. If I then subtract the closing balance, it means I paid 13,500 to SARS for the year. So that 13,500 will also get shown on your operating activities section of your cash flow statement as a payment for tax. Okay, so that's the end of the video. In video two, I'm going to be doing question 11.1, page 298, just the calculation of cash receipt from clients and cash paid to suppliers. And question 11.4, the cash flows from operating activities section only. This question 11.4 is a long question, which will then be covered further in other videos. So that's the end of this video.